All right guys, today we're gonna to be doing another little experiment using the Tinfolio 22 revolver. And that's gonna be shooting 22 caliber air gun pellets out of it. So, I wouldn't, do not do this at home. Um, Top Litter Mouse did a video about this uh, about six or seven years ago where he was shooting these out of a uh, break action or single action 22, something like that. And he was able to chronograph it and he's got some crazy speeds. So these pellets only weigh about 18 grams, 18 and a quarter grams each. So these are the yellow uh, pneumatic air gun um, propellant charges. These are pretty much 22 blanks. They sell these for air guns. Uh, to drive nails into concrete and studs and stuff like that. Um, four is the highest power uh, rating I could find in the actual 22 uh, caliber blanks. I was able to find six and sevens, but in the 27 caliber. So I'm going to work with the 22s. These are perfectly safe to shoot in a 22 gun as a blank cartridge. Um, however, they use sometimes they have troubles extracting and they will not run in semi autos. So the idea was, uh, something that Tough Later Mouse didn't look at was out of a 22 revolver, so like this revolver here, I can go through and I can easily remove the cylinder. So I can manually load these 22 blanks in here and then press the pellets in the other side. Now the reason why you don't want to press the pellet in and press the 22 blank in is the if you have the pellet too close to the blank, this skirt will blow off of the blank. And you don't want that, uh, will blow off of the, the pellet, and you don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load these manually, the blanks lit manually into the cylinder, and then press in the pellets down, you know, just a little bit of a ways, not too far. I don't want them setting against it, but I do want there to be some pressure there. Um, so. Uh, we're going to do that, but first we're going to shoot a cylinder. Uh, we're going to do about three or four shots of um, regular 22 uh, on some cactus so we can kind of compare it just a little bit and see, you know, kind of if we see anything interesting. Now, the idea behind this is, is say for some reason you can't find 22 long rifle, you can get these at almost any hardware store that sells building supplies. And these 22 pellets, you can always get these online relatively cheap. And you get like 500 pellets? How many are in here? 200 pieces. You get like 200 pieces in these. And these are usually only a couple bucks. You can also get these at Walmart sometimes. Um, now, these blanks are kind of expensive. They're like 15 bucks for a box. And we get, how many do we get in here? Let's see how many we get. 100 pieces. So 15 bucks, you know, plus these, you're looking at about 20 bucks, and you get, a, you know, 100 shots. And then if you buy a second one of these, you got, you know, 200 shots. Uh, more expensive than t most 22 for sure. But if you cannot find 22, you can always put this inside of a single shot bolt gun or a break action 22 or in this case, a revolver 22, and you could technically still shoot. So let's do some experimenting and see. And these are also um, Hunter Extremes. These are like fragmenting, ex expanding, something like that. I have some lighter ones, which I might also try, but uh, we're gonna try the heavier ones just so we can see what we can do. All right. So as you can see, there's our little group right there. And there's the back side. Let's load up these pellets and these blanks and uh, see what happens. All right, so as you can see, we have the pellets pressed in and we have these blanks. Neither one of these hold into this cylinder as tight as I would have liked it to. So I'm having to be kind of careful putting these in. Now, like I said, I can't stress this enough. 
Do not try this at home. So we are ready to go. Let's uh shoot right there at the beginning. Ooh, a lot of flash. All right. Okay, so problem that I'm seeing here is some of these pellets have started riding out a little bit. Let's try this again. Alright, go back at this again. Okay, that must be an already fired one. Okay. Press this one pellet back in. We got some kind of stoppage here of some kind. Let me fix this. All right, so the way that this is happening is the way that these the cylinders made, because it's not a flush sit, the cat these um they're able to deform quite a bit, which is causing jamming issues with the gun. Now, I mean, this action is more than strong if they handle the pressures of this, but I mean, if your gun won't fu function, then that's a problem. Now I can see these being a bit better, more you know, feasible inside of something like say a bolt, a single action bolt gun or a break action where there's not really an opportunity for these to mushroom. So I'm going to see if I can use the, the ejector, push these out and see what I can do with single shot. Well, um, it's uh, jammed in there good enough to where I'm, I gotta press these out or knock these out with a you know a stake and a hammer or something like that. But let's at least take a look at the damage that we we're able to do. Now, if you can look, that's our regular 22 right there, and these were the shots that we were able to get out and the exit wounds. So these actually did do more damage than the regular 22. So that's interesting. Next time I'll bring out the uh, the single shot bolt gun and we'll try it again and uh, see uh, what happens with that. I didn't bring it this time, but uh, next time. Now here's another reason why I wouldn't advise doing this at home with your own uh, firearms. We did get a full case head separation on three of these cartridges. So if you look right here, here, and here, it's hard to see but the brass has uh, spread out in there, and when I was knocking them out, the heads just came right off of them. So I'm going to have to get a 22 caliber um, chamber ream uh, or something like that and knock those out from the front side. Um, and you can also see we got a lot of uh, lead fouling on some of these as well. So that means that when those, uh, those pellets were hit with a propellant, some of them partially melted, and a lot of this here... Uh, it's just a uh, lead residue so like I said all in the name of science there's, I knew that the pressures that were gonna be done here were more than safe enough in this particular revolver um, but you always got to think about you know stuff like spalding and stuff coming out of the cylinders and stuff so I'm doing this so you don't have to so I'm back and I just discovered something so this is the cylinder rod and it's got this section here. Now what I've noticed is on a cylinder that's clear, it passes all the way through. On one of these ones with a separate case head, it does not. So I'm gonna see if maybe I can use this to actually push these out. There you have it. I was able to knock them all out using <laughs> the uh, cylinder uh, access pin. You can see that's the, uh, the front of the case where it 
just sheared off and then that's the the you know the where the crimp was so i guess that's interesting to know about on the uh tin folio is that this can be used as a cylinder ring to knock out cases that have case head separation need to know i wonder if that's true with a lot of other 22 uh revolvers as well anyways let's slap this back together really fast Good to go anyways for the like the the third fourth 20th time y'all have a good one i'll see y'all next time